Alright, what is going on, Jake Paulers? Welcome back to the Center Half Bench channel today. I've got some Golden State Warriors news to, of course, be talking about with you guys. We've actually had a couple of signings recently for them, which is very, very good because, let's be honest here, the Warriors, I swear, had like 10 roster players and weren't really signing anyone. Again, there was a lot of theories on who they were going to sign, who they were going to bring in. And again, me and Rally talked about this on the CHB podcast, which new episode, I don't know if it will be out when this video comes out, probably not, but I guess I'll show you maybe some of the snake peek. But yeah, basically we were talking about Jermichael Green and the Golden State Warriors and kind of how this is going to be because the Warriors have signed him. According to the GOAT Woj himself, Jermichael Green will sign with the Warriors once he finalizes a buyout with the Thunder and this is all being reported by Woj. Again, this past season, I believe he played for Denver. Then he got, like, exiled out to Oklahoma, which is the second last place you want to get exiled to after Sacramento. And, yeah, now he's organizing a buyout, and he's going to go play with the Warriors. Now, this is a very, very good signing for a lot of reasons. Hold on, I'm just going to itch my back. I've got, like, AIDS or something growing on it. I don't know. I'm sorry about this lighting, too, guys. It is, it is a bit sunny outside. I'm recording this during the day, so... It is what it is, but um, <clears throat> when we look at Jermichael Green, the thing that is really good about him with the Golden State Warriors is I think he's going to instantly replace what Naman Bialica did with the Warriors. Again, Bialica decided to leave. I don't know if the Warriors were going to offer him a deal. He definitely would have had deals from other teams, and he just decided to go overseas, which is fair enough. I know he's from Europe, I believe, so... That's fine that he decided to go over there and do all of that type of stuff. But again, when you look at it, Jermichael Green is going to do exactly what Nerman Bialica did. He won't be as good of a ball handler and playmaker because for some reason Bialica turned into like LeBron in some games where he was just dishing out assists and being the point center like LeBron played this season. I don't know what happened there. And he might not be as good of a catch-and-shoot type of three-point shooter, but Jermichael Green is going to be a much better defender, who I think is going to be able to guard the center position a little bit better, potentially. Also can switch on to that three as well. Probably play the three to the five, I think Jermichael Green will for sure be able to do. He also kind of fits what more of what they will want Jonathan Kaminga to kind of be in the NBA. So when you look at it like that, I think, you know, they want Jonathan Kaminga to not only be a defensive player of the year one day, but to be able to switch on from three to five consistently while also improving that shot, which again, Jermichael Green does have a pretty decent mid-range. From remembrance, he does have a pretty good three-point shot as well. And yeah, he's a very good, solid veteran guy that in normal teams would play the three or the four, but in the Golden State Warriors will probably train more to the four or the five. So this was a good signing. He kind of replaces what you had in Naman Bialica while also being able to, I think, mentor Jonathan Kaminga as well. He will probably start off being like a 12th man on this team. Will probably play a fair bit of minutes because, again, they will have injuries here and there. That's just guaranteed with any team. But yeah, he also might, to some people, replace a little bit of what Otto Porter had. Again, you're never going to be able to replace what you had in Otto Porter. The fact that they were able to get a dude that could score like 15 any given night, that is like a 40% from three type of dude that can shoot really well, was really good. I mean, that's physically impossible. They also got him on the minimum. But it's like, you never see that shit ever again. And then he ended up going and signed with the Raptors on like $7 million or something a season, which I think is really cheap as well. He's probably worth even more than that. So the fact that the Warriors had him on the minimum was a little bit crazy. Uh, I don't know how they managed to pull that. And then you've also got the fact that I made a video talking about how he was the steal of the free agency nearly like a year ago. And some people didn't believe me. A lot of Warriors fans did. I ended up being right. The fact that they were able to get him for a minimum is quite stinky and disgusting. I don't know how they did that. That was insane. But yeah, they've gotten Jermichael Green who... I guess could kind of play a similar role to what Otto Porter did. Maybe an outside shooter that can kind of defend as well. He might play a mix of what Otto Porter Jr. did when he plays small forward and power forward. But then when he plays maybe some center minutes, he'll kind of try and do what Naman Bialica did for this team. So that will, of course, be the situation as well. And then if I check my old phone here, I believe the Golden State Warriors signed someone else. And this was reported by Shams. They actually signed a dude named Mac McClung. 
Now, the issue I have with Mac McClung is, if he didn't get signed into the NBA, he has such an NBA name, right? Imagine going to, like, Chili's and you get served by Mac McClung, or going to, like, McDonald's and you hear over the speaker, you know, in a really shit speaker, or even KFC, just someone screaming at you on that old KFC 1990s box that they've got going on. Hey, my name's Mac McClung, welcome to KFC. Like, thank God for him that that dude got signed to the NBA. Like, there's so many of those guys. Like, imagine... Oh, something just uploaded. Imagine, like, Quindary Witherspoon, who I don't think is still on the Warriors. But imagine going to KFC and being like, Hey, my name's Quindary Witherspoon, and welcome to KFC. Like, what? <laughs> like, they're so lucky they get into the NBA because their parents set them up for failure if they don't. But basically, Mac McClung sounds like a Ninja Turtles character. Averaged 13 points while shooting 64% from the field in Summer League. And this is reported by Shams. Signed a one-year deal. He's not even two-way contracted. So the Warriors really like what they got out of Mac McClung. Uh, and yeah, I believe this dude played one game for the Lakers this past season or something. And like dropped 13 points or something crazy like that. I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty decent pickup if... He can do what they want, like, I'm gonna give a quick Google search right here, because I actually don't even know how old this guy is. Mac McClung is 23 years old, out of Virginia, he's 188 centimeters, apparently he's a point guard. Uh, again, he won the G League Rookie of the Year, that's pretty cool. And yeah, that was on the South Bay Lakers, he played one game for the Lakers, 6 points it was, 33% from 3, cool beans. I don't know. That's uh, a very interesting one right there. I don't mind that at all. You, you got a thing of players like Justinian and Jessup, uh, who they actually drafted about a year or so ago, a year and a half, two years maybe, who's been playing for the Illawarra Hawks his past two seasons. He never got a chance to play for the Golden State Warriors. He just continues to play for their summer league. They own his draft rights. He continues to ball out in the NBL nearly every single year, but... Just hasn't gotten picked up, which is a little bit unfortunate, but also, I I guess, is a little bit fair, to be honest. But yeah, the Warriors, I, I still think they have like two or three roster spots they can probably fill out in this team. I mean, everyone and their dad left the Warriors. If I'm going to be completely honest, I was actually offered a contract by the Golden State Warriors to uh, come and warm up their bench and make sure it was all nice and heated and cushy for Steph Curry's butt. That's what I, uh, yeah, I decided not to take it, though, uh, because, I don't know, I just couldn't be bothered moving out moving out of my house and going to America, to be honest. Nah, nah I'm joking. I would probably do that in a heartbeat if I got signed, let's be honest here. Yeah, so, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so the Golden State Warriors signed these two guys. Probably got two to three dudes left to go. I think they had, like, six or so players leave them in free agency to other teams. Some of them not even in the NBA. And then, a couple other things happen here and there. Possibly, I don't know, I think it was six or seven, maybe? They, and they still got the two-way players they probably got to fill out. I'm not too sure if that Weatherspoon dude's even playing for their, on their two-way, or I don't think Justin and Jess have got picked up either. So yeah, I guess we'll have to see how this goes. More Golden State Warriors news, I'm sure, will be coming very, very shortly. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Did you guys like this video, or did you guys not? Of course, I would definitely like to know. Are you guys happy that the Golden State Warriors sign these two players? You know, definitely let me know. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.